Welcome. Tonight, my name is, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, uh, the difference between variable cost, fixed cost, and another type of cost, which is mixed cost. So uh, the first type of cost that I'd like to talk about, it's probably one of the easiest to understand, is something called a fixed cost. And what a fixed cost is, is a fixed cost remains fixed, hence the name, fixed over the, uh, over the relevant range. Perfect example of a fixed cost would be something like rent. Rent, it doesn't matter if you uh, have one employee or you have uh, 100 employees, as long as the rent is the same, the building that you have your factory in, for example, is the same, you don't have to get a bigger uh, factory, then your rent remains the same. Uh, same thing you could say to, if, instead of talking about employees, uh, rent is relevant to say things like uh, you know, a, a desk manufacturer that makes desks. Whether you make one desk or you make a hundred desks, uh, the rent that you pay on the factory building remains the same. And if we wanted to, to show you what, what, or if you wanted to outline what uh, a fixed cost would look like, you could have a chart where you could have activity level, activity level on one axis of the cart, the horizontal axis, and then the vertical axis we would have the cost, right? So this would be total cost. And fixed cost would be a straight line at whatever the rent would be. So let's say rent was $1,500 a month, and uh, it doesn't matter if you have zero activity or you have uh, lots of activity, there's obviously more activity as we go to the right, the amount of rent that you have remains flat, it remains fixed, right? And so, and what's important about fixed costs, one thing that you have to remember is that it's fixed during the relevant range. You know, at some point in time, uh, say this is a furniture manufacturer, maybe this uh, particular space of, uh, of property or building or factory can support, say, the manufacturing of 100 desks per month. Well, at some point, you're not gonna be able to produce more than, let's say, 100. And once you get to 100 to, to more than 100, you need a larger space, in which case the amount would go up, right? It would go up because you'd have to go out and rent another space, and then that, would, that additional space would be fixed at that rate and so on. So um, what, when we say something is fixed, we're always talking about being fixed throughout the relevant range. Now, if you go outside the range, then you can imagine the cost would, it would, it would go up like a stair, like a ladder if you were to plot it, it would look like that. All right, so that's, not, that's called fixed cost. So fixed cost is this. What's interesting is about fixed cost is although it's fixed in total, the per unit cost actually is variable with fixed cost. So what I mean by that is uh, if, uh, for example, if we have $1,500 a month for rent, if you produce uh, one desk, right, one desk, then the fixed cost associated with that desk, associated with the rent, would be uh, $1,500, right? So the rent allocated that you would put to that would be $1,500. If you made two desks, right, two desks in the month, then each desk would be, uh, you take the 1,500 and you divide it by two, and then each desk, the fixed cost that would be allocated towards the overhead of each desk would go down to $750 because the $1,500 is not divided by one, it's divided by two, and so on and so on. So if you look at it from a per unit point of view, it actually doesn't stay fixed, it actually goes down the more desks that you create or the more uh, productivity that you have, the more it's spread over and the per unit cost of fixed costs goes down with increasing activity. All right, so that's one type of cost. The other type of cost that we have are something called variable costs, okay? And variable costs, a good example would be perhaps the lumber in a furniture shop, okay? So if you're making desks and it requires, say, $30 worth of lumber or $30 worth of material for each desk, and if you have, you create zero desks, right? Zero desks then you would expect that your lumber cost would be zero, right? So, uh, and if you create one desk, then your one desk is over here, and then you would imagine that the uh, $30 would be your lumber cost for that, and 
it would go up at a slope, a very, um, a, a slope that would go up something like that. And so this is the, this is the fixed cost of the, of that. I'll erase that just for sake of argument here. But come back to that here in a second. And so variable cost, if you have no activity, you have uh, no cost. And if you have more activity, obviously the total cost, this would be the total cost, um, total, total fixed cost, fixed cost line goes up at a, an angle uh, as activity increases. So activity increase, total cost, total cost goes up as well. All right, now, uh, again, it's relevant in the range. So for example, if you're buying uh, you know, one pallet of lumber, your cost is gonna be $30 per, uh, per, per desk. But you can imagine that if you start going out beyond that and you start buying more and more and more lumber, then you could probably make a deal with the uh, manufacturer. And I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but then if you increased it, then it would go up at a slightly, lo slightly lower, and then economics would be such that if you just kept on asking for more and more and more and more, uh, and supply became so great, then the laws of economics of supply and demand, the actual per unit cost would go, uh, would go up at a steeper angle than the $30 because the demand for the lumber would go up. But again, when we're talking about a fixed cost, we're always talking about within the relevant range that we're talking. So uh, fixed cost, so in the case of a desk where it's $30 per desk, so $30 per desk, it's often written like $30 per every desk. And if we say that, uh, uh, if we say that the uh, fixed cost is um, uh, X, then we would say, the slope, or if we were gonna draw the line of the fixed cost, uh, it would be 30x, meaning x meaning the number of deaths that you would make. Again, put in zero, zero times 30 is zero, put in five deaths, then five times 30 is $150 for your lumber cost that's there. Okay. Other types of uh, variable costs, not just lumber, but uh, a classic example would be hourly employees. So we're at salary employees that get paid a certain amount per year, regardless of the number of, of hours. They would have a fixed cost, which would be there. An hourly employee, if you don't have them come to work, they don't get paid, you don't have an expense, you have them work 100 hours, whatever their hourly rate is times 100 hours would be there. So um, we can't say all salaries are fixed or all salaries are variable. Um, it really kind of depends on, 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 on what it is that we're specifically talking about. So we've got a fixed, uh, and then we also have a, a variable cost that we're talking about. What's interesting about a variable cost, unlike the fixed cost, is that the per unit charge, the $30 per desk, remains the same. So under a variable cost, the per unit charge, per unit cost, is the same with variable, whereas the per unit cost with uh, fixed cost actually goes down as activity increases. Uh, variable cost is that. In addition to having fixed costs, variable costs, we also have something called a mixed cost. And uh, mixed costs are things like your telephone bill, right? So your telephone bill or your utility bill will sometimes have a base rate, right? And this is whether you use your uh, Utility is a classic example. So they, they charge a connection charge of five or 10 or $15 a month. No matter if you don't use your utilities at all, you will still get a connection charge, I'd say $15, $15 per month. So if you use zero dollars, you get $15 a month. Um, and then as you increase your usage, uh, that would be the variable rates such as your kilowatt hours or your BTUs and gas, or however you're buying your energy, it would go up here. So it's, it has both a fixed component, the $15 uh, fixed charge, and then a variable component that's here. And if you were to draw the whole line, it would intersect at zero, it would intersect at the 15. And obviously this would be the fixed portion of it. 
and this would be the variable portion. This would be the total, total cost line here, all right, total cost line. And so that kind of makes sense. So you've got a fixed cost, variable cost, and then a mixed cost. Again, when we're looking at a mixed cost, uh, for example, it would be uh, your utility bill. The equation for that would be if it's a $15, uh, $15 uh, charge for hooking up the utility, utilities, whether you use no nothing, um, plus whatever your kilowatt hour is, let's say it's 25 per, uh, cents per kilowatt hour, that's how we get billed our utilities. And so it would be $15 plus 25 cents per every kilowatt. And kilowatt's just a, a way that we measure our, our energy, and that's how you, how you pay for energy is by your kilowatt hour, and, and that would be there. So the slope here, you use zero kilowatts, then your, your cost would be $15. If you used, say, uh, four kilowatts during the month, then your cost would be $16 because 15 plus 25 cents uh, times four equals uh, $16 if we've done our math right, right? So uh, kind of there. And a lot of costs, you know, your telephone bill is this way, your utility bill is done this way. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of times these are things that are done this way. Going back to our rent, when we were talking about rent and rent was at $1,500 per month and it was a fixed cost. Not all rent is actually fixed cost. As it turns out that a lot of leases, and I'm talking commercial leases, not residential leases, but commercial leases are often, you have a base rent of a, say, $1,500 per month. And then what happens is you have a, an additional rent based upon your sales. So if you have zero sales, the lease agreement will read, well, uh, it's uh, $1,500 plus 20% uh, of sales or 10% of sales. And it's very, very, very common in uh, commercial retail spaces. Um, I'm not talking about uh, like a strip mall in, in you know, East San Jose, but uh, in you know, a commercial lease agreement that would be in a mall, uh, you know, Valley Fair Mall, Santana Row, very, 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 very common for the lease agreement to have both a fixed portion and a variable portion and it's often tied to sales or net income. The, the rationale behind that is that uh, the landlord of the property wants to encourage uh, people to the, uh, to the shopping center. And by encouraging people to the shopping center, the landlord will receive more money because the sales goes up and rent is based on, on partially based upon the, the sales that happen within the, uh, within the individual share um, leases, um, uh, uh, rent, you know, in, in their shops. So the more so the sales they have, the more the landlord gets in, in revenue and so forth. So um, it, it, you can't just say, oh, well, rent is always fixed. Uh, just like you can't say that uh, uh, salaries are always fixed. Sometimes there's a fixed component as well as a variable component that you have to watch out for.